We would like to welcome Paul Disterhef, a longtime resident of the Haight-Ashbury, a native San Franciscan, uh, to the Haight-Ashbury Video Oral History Project. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. All right, well, tell me a little about your early beginnings. Um, where were you born? I was born in San Francisco, St. Joseph's Hospital, which is up in the Buena Vista area. It's, the hospital's gone now, but uh, my family uh, lived on Frederick Street at Stanion, so that was the, my first home. When, when, when was this? From uh, 39 until I think 47. Is what, really what were your parents' names? Uh, my father, uh, Albert Disterhef, and he came from Poland in the, in the 1920s. And my mother's family came from Germany in the 1920s. And they all came here because they had relatives who had immigrated here beforehand. And this was the place to be. Did you have any brothers and sisters? I've got one brother. Uh, What's his name? Uh, his name is Donald. And he's uh, 62 years old. And wow. I'm going to go visit him in, in Arkansas. The Wonderful. Wilds of Arkansas. And you're still here. I'm still here. And where are you living presently? I'm living uh, on Parnassus at Cole Street. Uh, my family, um, my father was a baker and uh, uh, worked in various bakeries until the war and then uh, worked in the shipyards. And after the war, went back to work for uh, bakery, Blum's Bakery. It was one of these high, high-end bakeries. And then eventually bought his own shop there at uh, Parnassus and Cole, a Carnation Bakery. And is that, that the first name of the bakery? That was the first it? name. It what was, year are we talking? When did this happen? That was 1950. Okay. That bakery was established in 1906. After the earthquake, all those buildings after the earthquake and fire were established there. And, the uh, original um, builder was a man named Schultz. He built that building as a bakery, complete with a brick oven. And, uh, wow, so it's so, got a natural brick oven inside yes, it. Yes, yeah. so when, uh, when my family took it over in, in the 50s, uh, and they operated for uh, 19 years there. And uh, after them, uh, they sold, and uh, the guy who owned it was there about it a year, two years, <coughs> and then... Uh, the Zen uh, king, the Tassajara. I would love to back up a little bit. Um, you were living, uh, you, did you yourself get married? Did you have any children? Yes. Uh, uh, I didn't marry until I was 25 years of age. And that was 1964 is when I married. I've got one daughter, uh, she's about 35. What's her name? Her name is Lisa and uh, one grandchild. What's your grandchild's name? Dana. Dana. And what was your wife's name? Uh, Faina. Wow. Everybody yeah. who rhymes. It's yes, wonderful. just coincidentally. Yes. So then, um, this part of your life happened, and um, hopefully you'll have more grandchildren. When this mm -hmm. is viewed, they'll be grown. <laughs> um, yes. You then went through this, got married, children, and then you came back to the hate. You came yes. back to the area. Where did you live then? Where are you living now? or Where I'm living now. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I've... Uh... My, my parents bought some property in the area, so that's essentially my gold mines. Um, that's, that's how I earn my living, is managing those properties. I understand. Not a lot. Right, sure. It's enough. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, are any of those properties around the Ashbury? Oh, uh, yes, all, all three of them. That I live where, are the, where are the locations? Of same, same place, that, the bakery building, and there's another one across the way from there. Uh, and uh, I live in a set of flats that's adjacent to the bakery building. Great. So. Great. Um, have you yourself ever been involved in working in the bakery on Parnassus? Oh, yes. I, the whole, it was a whole family operation, including my grandmother and my brother. And uh, we all worked in the bakery as kids. Kept the family and, together. Yes, yeah. age 11. And, fried donuts before I went to school. And, uh, Did you take a few with you? Always, yeah. <laughs> Nice times. Yeah. Wonderful. Do you remember in the early 60s or the late 60s what was going on at the bakery at that point? Uh, well, during the, uh, the craziness of the hate, there were so many people on the street. It, was, it, it had kind of a festive quality to it. And, uh, and, then, um, and then it kind of turned ugly. Uh, I, I, 
kind of come into that scene. I, I went to work as a probation officer in San Mateo County as in adult probation. So we entered, we supervised people that were from San Francisco in addition to San Mateo County and uh, was involved with uh, the Haight-Ashbury Clinic, which... Uh, with David Smith. Yes, he was a neighbor of mine. He lived uh, neatly next door, so I had some conversations with him. And, and coincidentally, where the clinic was located what had been the site of my dentist. Oh, my goodness. So it was uh, kind of a... So there used to be a dentist office in the same right. location. Right, I'd gone um, back there a time or two. And, what is that, Clayton and uh, Ashbury? Right, yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Um, so at that point, you weren't working in the bakery anymore. No. no. But you would, be, you would be visiting your family, and at right. well, I the was later living. half, you were living there. Yeah, I was living there. So had you ever woken up and walked down the street, a normal like day to get somewhere? Would you ever walk through the crowds, come in and out of it? Did you, I tried to avoid that. The, the but, nowhere to park the car. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, had you been in the bakery in the period of that? Had you ever see young people come in and out to grab a donut, to grab a coffee or whatever? Sure. So yeah. it was one of the places in that area where, where the public uh, gathered. Whether, did you also have coffee? Uh, was it no, just we didn't take have out? coffee. There, there was on the on the corner of Carl and Cole, um, a, like a thrift shop. Um, I'm I'm hard pressed to remember who was running, but it was yes. it was like a giveaway, free People, store kind of a yes, thrift and, free store. Um, there was some some benevolent group that yes. you could go in and get clothing and <laughs> and things there. So. That that brought more of the people from the hate up that, up that way. two blocks exactly that, up in that district exactly. Um, you were mentioning before about Quicksilver, an organization where they would print posters. Yes, um, I'm very interested firsthand to know anything you can think about that that uh, we can learn about that we may not know about. An example is this organization. Well, that's about the extent of it. I, right, there was a, a, a fellow that I was on my caseload that I supervised, lived in the area, and, gotcha. uh, and that was just kind of cool. And he had a business. He had a business, yeah, very was successful. It, called? it was called <laughs> Outrageous <laughs> Propaganda. And what did they do? They made uh, posters and um, album covers. Um, he did artwork? He did artwork, and he also designed uh, an old radio of a 1920s style radio, which I now see, and he was uh, he was trying to sell that at the time. It was too expensive to to be to be to, sold at that time. Yeah, to to really be sold. At, it was an AM FM, which was and you got to remember the 70s. So I mean the, that technology was there, but uh, not used not used that extensively as. It what were some be. of uh, the people he represents, I think you mentioned to me, I, I Silver, you saw a poster. Yeah, that, that's the only, he, he showed me a couple of uh, things that he was doing. So one was for a quick, quick yeah, silver event? I remember that one pretty clearly. It, uh, it was a scene of a, a prairie scene with a, uh, like a, um, a man on horseback. <coughs> um, like the, uh, the sure. Western Union or the, the, right. the, the quick Pony silver Express. Mail. Pony Express. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, now in your life, as you live here, I would love, I mean, your first, your first coming to the Haight-Ashbury area was what year? Well, 1939. So from 1939 to present, look at it as decades. What do you see that has been kept through all those years? What do you see where we are now? Well, it's changed dramatically. <laughs> uh, and the people have changed, uh, you know, at the time that, that I was growing up, it was mostly uh, old world Europeans, um, uh, lots of Jewish and German, uh, Irish, uh, a scattering of Filipinos, because Black I went to school, yeah, and uh, a scattering of Blacks, uh, and a few Asians, but for the most part, you know, white Europeans, middle class, uh, blue collar, working area. I mean, Hate Street 
there were 12 bars between Masonic and Standard. And part of the style of, of a workman at that day is he'd start out in the morning and go have a, a shot and maybe a coffee before he went to work. And then after work, would stop in that bar before they uh, went home. So 12 bars, I mean, that was a staggering the number amount. of bars. Uh, there were at least three bakeries and uh, uh, barber shops. Um, next shoe to the, repair store. Shoe repair stores, yes. Up near where I lived, up on Cole Street, there were two shoe repair stores. One of them, uh, the man and his wife, uh, they were uh, German Jews and they uh, they lived above the, their shop. Right. Yeah. That's how you make it. That's how you make it. Exactly. Um, so in the 60s, I was told right before the 60s, there was a lot of vacancies in apartments and things. What did the, the hundred thousands of people that came here change what was going on from before that? How did it can become the blue collar worker into all these young people from all over and music on the street? I mean, did you feel that as a native resident that a part of your community was not available to you or did you feel you had... No, I, it, was, it was a vital time. Uh, you, you mentioned vacancies. I sure don't remember, remember that. I mean, there, were, there were so many people in the area. Uh, there were a lot of, of uh, property owners that had apartments. And now you had all these people that were coming into it. So maybe he had rented it to a couple of people, and now there's 20. And, uh, and they're trashing the place. And so uh, I, I know many of these property owners just ended up walking away from them. Uh -huh. uh, Joseph Aliota was the mayor at that time. And uh, his wife would come into the, our bakery, my mother newer in passing, and they were buying up a lot of the property where these property owners I had, had, yeah, had, had gotten frightened and uh, ran away, couldn't, couldn't financially deal with it any longer. Did you ever have any problems yourself with the bakery or, or any no. of the... No. So I'm going to backtrack. Uh, from when the bakery opened, it was called the Carnation Bakery? That, that's my understanding, yes. And then tell me the progression of the names or what happened approximately what decade, what year, not, not to be exact, okay. from the Carnation Bakery to present, what right. has happened in that space? Carnation Bakery from 1906 until 1969, it was Carnation. And it was Gallo Carnation, a fellow from the North Beach had bought it. And he operated it for less than two years, and then he sold it to Tassajara. They decided they were going to bake bread, and uh, so the Zen Center became involved with it at that point. And then they changed the name to Tassajara Bread Bakery. And it remained there, that, that name, until... Um, Approximately. 91, perhaps. And then Just Desserts, which was a big operation, they came and uh, they called it a marriage. It wasn't a marriage. It was uh, Just Desserts uh, right. dominated and, and operated it during that time. And uh, then Just Desserts uh, ran away. They just left. Kept okay. trying to sell it, the owner of it. and. Uh, when was that about? Um, when they finished? I think 2002 or so. Was, uh, and what was the changeover from that it, to what's going on presently? And now now there's a, a French bakery in there, Bay Boulangerie. Uh, uh, Pascal Rigo uh, has uh, endless numbers of, uh, of restaurants and bakeries and similar mm -hmm. operations in I the city. Has it always been a strict bakery? Has it ever had the edge of being a place where you went for coffee as well? No, it's so just... It's always been a strict bakery. Yeah, it was a bakery, but under Just Desserts, uh, they uh, they also serve coffee. Coffee. So that was yeah. the only period. Yeah, that's the only change. So presently it's still operating as this French bakery? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's primarily an outlet 
they're not doing any baking on the premises at this point. It's a shame. Yeah, it is a shame. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. There's the oven is still there. It's ready to go. <coughs> um, I was uh, at this point really curious if uh, any of your family still lives in San Francisco. Uh, just my my daughter and her family, her husband and child, and uh, my wife and I, uh, that's the only... Uh, Do you have any friends in the neighborhood? Oh, many friends. I mean, living in a neighborhood so long, when you walk down the street, you're bound to yes. run into a hello here and right. hello there. Always. Yeah. And uh, how do you find, uh, how do you find, you being a longtime resident of the Hay, do you find there are a lot of people like hidden away in their houses. There is a, a community underground of people who have been here for a long time. They're still here. Well, or the, is it completely diluted and very it, few? Well, it's it's changed pretty dramatically. I'd say in the last five or six years, there are now uh, more families with uh, with children, and uh, I use that six year point. And I talked with a woman who's got the a six-year-old child, she said when she first had her now six-year-old, she said there were hardly any children. And now they're everywhere you look, there's there's infants and two and three-year-olds. So the, the families have come the back families, to the hate. And, and, but the cost of buying anything in this area is or staggering. Or rent? Well, renting, the rent control uh, pretty well has some control over it. and. Uh, but uh, fortunately for us up there and in that little Coal Valley area, uh, it's a pretty desirable place to live. So uh, vacancies don't last very long. Was that called Coal Valley? No, Was it I don't a new know. Name? Somebody coined that. And it's uh, been the last five or eight uh, yeah, years or so. Yeah, it's probably about like that. Um, I would love for you to think about any of the people you might know in the hate as a friend, someone who's had a business, and any business that still exists that you can remember that's been there a long time. Uh, I can think of one, the shoe store on Hate Street's been there 87 years. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, you know of any other businesses in there that have been there at least from the 60s that are still there or been there from before. Well, I, I, you I would know it, firsthand. Yeah, I think Acacia Glass was on Hate Street for the longest time. And where is that? And, and what uh, kind of business now, is that? Now in? they've moved over on uh, on Frederick. Okay, so Frederick they're still and, in the Hate. Though. Yes, uh, I'm sure the rents probably ran a lot of there. So that's what we've been told. <laughs> yeah, that uh, the artists and the creative people can't afford the high rents of corporations that are moving in. Yeah. And there are uh, there are associations, uh, Haight Ashbury Land Trust, and all these things trying to preserve the um, the buildings and the businesses. Uh, there are people who are trying to get it donated built as a land trust to preserve the heart of the hate. Mm. Had you ever felt the heart of the hate? Do you? No, I don't think so. No. Uh, you you got it, you got into the hate because of family and, and right. business and circumstances and circumstances yeah. exactly, um, but one person even in your walks in your travels to your car to you to whatever or you may not not even know them but they sit there every day and you've seen them for years. Are there those situations where you run into someone? Well, see, I, I'm so old now that most. Of I don't give you that. Yeah, see, most of those people are are gone. Right. You know, they. they Died. So were there people? So I'm the old timer now. On the is there someone that, you could remember that has passed on that we should remember? Is there anyone who made your day brighter when you saw them and they gave you a smile? Oh, no, there's always uh, some, there were always some old timers. Uh, there was uh, Henrietta. She lived on uh, on Cole. Um, I forget what's in there now, but there's something. Henrietta was one of the characters in the street. She. Uh, uh, she was Jewish, and she knew Mayor Feinstein. <laughs> and um, she an older woman. Older woman, yeah. She she passed away sometime. But whenever there was some kind of controversy, we 
We had some urban renewal scam that came through in 79, and uh, they wanted everybody to uh, to open their house so they could you, these inspectors could come in and, and do these inspections and uh, upgrade your house. There were federal money, and so you'd get these these inexpensive loans. Well, not everybody wanted to participate in it. It was kind of some heavy-handed uh, moves on the part of the city to do that. There was some rather threatening letters and intimidate. When that Henrietta, she told him, she said, stick it. You can't come into my house. And if you come here, I'm going to go talk to Mayor Feinstein. And if you lean on me too much, you're going to be on the 6 o'clock news. Right. She then... Uh, hired uh, uh, former district attorney Hallinan, who who lived in that immediate area. Sure. And she, along with some others, and they went to court, and, uh, and the court ordered that you can't enter somebody's house without a search warrant or unless there's some emergency. Fire, sewers flowing out of the house. And, uh, exactly. So I loved her for that. No, exactly. Yeah. Well, it just told, shows me the independent spirit Yes. of those street people or those characters yeah. that have been in the hate that are part of the charm of yeah. the hate Ashbury. Uh, totally. I would like to know um, uh, what you see, uh, Paul, what you uh, see yourself, what would you like to see in the future of the hate Ashbury? What would you like to see in the future of the bakery? Um, do you have any vision on how you would like it to be after you passed. I mean, I uh, pray you were here with us for many, many more years, and I know you will be. But there's always the future. Well, how would you? Always changing, how so. would you like to see the Haight Ashbury? How would you like to see the hands of your bakery, whose hands it falls into? What would you like to see in the future? It's to me, it's your family's life's work. Well, as, as long as bakery. it's somebody that operates it with some integrity and produces good products and treats people well. That's all I would That's explain. pretty much what your standard has been through all these right. years with that bakery. Right. Why you chose one renter yes. rather than another Yes. is what the public gets. So whether you were part of the street or not, I see the same integrity for mm -hmm. trying to do the best. And right. that's, pos that's probably why you are a long-time resident and comfortable in the Haight-Ashbury. Because mm -hmm. everybody in the Haight is so unique whether they were part of a big music scene, an art scene, yeah. or whether they're the neighbor next door, there is much more diversity and much more uniqueness in the Haight-Ashbury than many other areas in the city, you know. And that continues, uh, as I said earlier, just we have a families now that didn't exist, you know, five and six years ago. These children will grow yeah. up. Yeah. And these children that might be second generation hate, their parents yeah. might be born in the hate, and now their children are being born in the hate. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, say the world, rather we've been so historical, some type of thoughts. Say the world would take your advice. Say they would really listen. And they, this meant something this counted. And people who are interested in the spirit of the hate Ashbury, People are think or who are interested in um, documenting what happened here. What was the neighborhood like? If fifty years from now or more, this tape was viewed in, the, in, in as part of a large collection of the Haight Ashbury, if the world would listen to you, Paul, what advice would you give the world? What advice would you give young people viewing this in the future? Well, I think the world is not going to listen. It never has. Uh, so the, your world whatever your immediate world is, your family and friends and neighbors, and you know, just do the best you can for the people that are around you. And uh, I think I'd, I'd leave my advice at that, because I think that's, that's some of my do wisdom of what I've seen. You do can't you heal can. the bigger picture, heal what's right around you. Right. Exactly. Well, it's been a pleasure, Paul, to have you here, and um, you've given us a lot of new insights in and uh, have barely added to this whole collection. And we're really, really appreciative and pleased that you've been here. And we want to thank you. We may call you again to be part of some other part of it, but you're definitely part of this community and now part of this project. So thank you again for, for being here with us.